I would like to talk about uh, the two main charts that I use as an astrologer, and I call them the karma chart and the dharma chart. And I want to talk to you about uh, you know, what they have in common, but mostly about their differences. First of all, these are two different charts calculated for the same exact birth moment, you know, and the same planets but each from a different perspective or view. So it's the same birthday, moment, time. Nothing changes except the perspective or view. So what you have here in these two charts are not different entities, You are, but just the one. You're the entity, but rather different views of the same entity and of the same moment in time. And we're talking astrology here. The one chart... I call your karma chart. And it's the standard traditional astrology chart that's been used for centuries and prob probably millennia. But there's nothing new whatsoever that I've added. That's just the, you know, the standard chart. And I call it the karma chart. And, and it's always been a chart of the personality, how we appear with ascendant and houses and so forth, you know the particular earth-centered circumstances in which each of us find ourselves embedded in and looking out through the lens of our particular personality at the world. And some of the poets have re referred to it as, you know, our personality as that, quote, terrible crystal, unquote. And the personality eventually, as we know, grows old and dies, that kind of thing. The second chart is not really new, but it's still new, or it's news to most astrologers. In fact, it's about 400 years old, originating when Copernicus first pointed it out to all the astronomer-slash-astrologers back around 1541 AD. It was then that Copernicus pointed out that it was the Earth that goes around the sun, and not, as we had mistakenly thought up till then, that the sun goes round the earth. And although this may sound like a simple mechanistic and mechanical observation, it has much deeper roots in the mind uh, and, and, and longer legs as well. Of course, those we know today and call astronomers, those astronomers back then immediately adopted the sun-centered view, which they added to the traditional geocentered view, the traditional astrology chart, and they went on to become the astronomers of today, putting men on the moon and all of that. They used both charts in their work, and they continue to do so today. Yet for reasons not clear to me, and I've never been able to get very clear on it, those of us, I'm not included in this, whom today we call astrologers, never accepted the sun-centered chart that Copernicus pointed out. Uh, I mean, Copernicus pointed out this was, in fact, the way things actually were, as in the truth. Instead, those astrologers continued to use, and still do today, the standard geocentric birth chart that they had used since time immemorial. Why astrologers chose to ignore the helio chart I have no idea, but I would love to better understand. However, astrologers have paid a dear price for their ignoring this, for their ignorance, and they continue to pay it forward, even today. And that price is that astrologers failed to become empowered by the truth, truth of a sun-centered solar system view, and they continue to behave as if everything revolved around us here on Earth, including the sun. This kind of self-centered view is obscured to the, to the degree that we ignore the truth that not everything does revolve around just us. I mean, really. But because we are still wrapped up in materialistic, 
19th and 20th century science, it's been convenient and even now traditional to ignore any spiritual ramifications of our views and to carefully compartmentalize our spiritual leanings as distinct from the mechanistic truth of science, as if science, scientists don't have a heart or a soul and a spirit. You know, save that for Sundays in church or don't go there at all. So we end up with folks like me, and I am an astrologer, so we end up with the odd astrologer like me, quote, crying in the wilderness, unquote, and echoing what Copernicus and science, scientists ever since have known as the truth, that we are also children of the sun, not only children of the earth. I would think that anyone reading this um, can grasp what I'm explaining here. But let me point out what apparently cannot be grasped by my fellow astrologers so that you might grasp it, if you will. The mechanistic transference of view from that of looking at life through our earth eyes to that of also, in addition to, mind you, looking at life from the point of view of the sun as center of the system is not without spiritual, emotional, and psychological ramifications. The transition to a sun-centered perspective does not mean that we give up our earth-centered perspective and somehow are, you know, planetless. You know, not at all. That's just silly. It's more like we transfer our consciousness to the sun center and from that vantage point continue to look out through our earth-centered personality at our life. It's like hooking up to the sun. But there is a difference. The transference of consciousness is a profound empowerment that changes forever. Our view, of course, I mean, it changes where we seat our consciousness. And that seat is also the heart of what is called the Dharma, the path or way to full awakening for each one of us. In other words, the Dharma chart, the sun-centered heliocentric chart, is a map of our spiritual path or Dharma the Dharma also being the path and the way through our obscurations and the thickets of our personal earth-centered life. And while this transference of consciousness for me began as the intellectual exercise of looking at two kinds of astrology charts, you know, one earth-centered, the traditional astrology chart, and the other sun-centered, unknown to me at the time, the ripple effects or implications of that act when fully resounding throughout my life was what I'm, I'm making an effort here to point out to you, that my consciousness actually transferred from the outside, from my personality, to within, the inside, and a new and more deeply seated and natural vantage point arose, my, you know, my very spiritual being, whatever we want or could agree to call it. I'm making that transition here and now rather than at the time when my physical body passes on. This is what they call, what the Buddhists call the transmigration that happens in the bardo to each of us. They also tell us that we're in the bardo now so that it can happen now as well. It's a simple shif shift of vantage point or attitude. Um, I'm sorry if this is complex, it just is.